It's really important that we collect accurate data because the public health data that we get for any disease outcome is utilized to make decisions about um, what populations need the most resources, what populations are at the highest risk for getting a particular health outcome. Some of the largest challenges that we um, encounter when we're collecting data um, are collecting data on diverse populations. So it is uh, really important that we take steps, intentional steps to collect data on populations that might not be represented in the larger data scheme to make sure that for health outcomes that everybody may be experiencing that we are um, collecting data that will help to inform our decisions about these populations as well. So there are a lot of issues um, that create these challenges, but they're um, likely systemic issues. So uh, the largest one being resource allocation. So um, resource meaning time, but also funding. If we're not collecting the data on these places and spaces and people, um, then we might not, um, people might not deem it important because the data doesn't exist um, to, to capture the issue that these populations might be experiencing. The data that we get um, and collect on populations um, is pretty much pulled together, right? And this is called aggregated data. And so disaggregated data is when we take and we break up these large data sets um, into much smaller pictures or um, pieces in order to make decisions about um, what the data may mean. We might break those pieces into white, black, um, or an other category, which um, does not uh, is not a great representation of our population data. So it's important that we break down this other category and in other words, disaggregate um, this category in order to make meaning of what um, experiences people might be having um, despite their group membership in like this other category, right? Information about race and ethnicity is important for a lot of different reasons. Uh, first of all, just so that we understand what those disproportionate uh, rates and impacts are on communities of color. You know, those of us that have done health disparities research, we're not surprised to see that there were racial and ethnic disparities associated with COVID-19, but the magnitude of those disparities was shocking. Again, the, the issue and problem with race and ethnicity data is not new to COVID-19. In public health surveillance, there have always been issues with collecting good, high quality race and ethnicity data. But what we were seeing with the COVID-19 cases and deaths, we found that at the beginning of the pandemic in early April, uh, very few jurisdictions or local jurisdictions or states were even reporting cases and deaths by race and ethnicity. We then looked in November to see how the jurisdictional reporting had changed, and we found that almost all jurisdictions were reporting confirmed cases and deaths by race and ethnicity, but we found that the cases and deaths that were reported with missing race and ethnicity were incredibly high. So we were seeing percentages and are still seeing percentages close to 25% of reported cases are missing race and close to 30% of reported cases are missing ethnicity. Local and state public health departments face a lot of challenges with collecting this data. There is a huge problem with trust, especially in communities of color. Trust in the healthcare system, trust in the research system. There is a long history of misuse of racial and ethnic data or intentional misuse of racial and ethnic data that have resulted in racist policies and systemic racism we know is really the root cause of the historical racial and ethnic disparities that we've seen and also those that we're seeing with COVID-19. But we think that there are a lot of opportunities to highlight the need for this data that could potentially improve the trust when people understand how their data is being used. They are more likely and more willing to disclose that information. You know, those on the front lines, when they realize how important this data is, um, to understanding and, and mitigating the impact of COVID-19, they may prioritize that in their process. 
Now, this is not to say that this is just a people problem. There are technology issues. Um, there are, you know, some of our rural and most underserved communities don't have the technology in place to simply push a button and report the data. Um, there's, there's manual collection and reporting of this data that's happening. So this really is a very complicated problem that seems straightforward, but it has been a persistent problem and we have not really addressed it from some of its root causes. And we're seeing that those problems exacerbated by COVID-19. Just from a kind of scientific and methodological perspective, having transparent open data about these problems enables anybody, you know, in any institution to do research that is thorough and well-documented and is accessible to anybody, reproducible. And, you know, the, the results of it are sound. Nobody can look at it and, and really question it. Um, fostering really an open data ecosystem around public health data and social and political determinants of health, I think promotes the importance of having this data readily accessible. The way it is now, there are a lot of different kind of siloed data sets around different aspects of public health. Our hope for this platform is that as more and more data sets are integrated into it, the way that these, all these health determinants and, and outcomes affect one another and are deeply connected to one another will hopefully affect the way we think about how this data ought to be collected and made available to the public for research. Um, I think it shines a light on the gaps within data sets and across data sets. And it also you know, enables new research to be done that otherwise couldn't be done when this data is just so disparate and siloed. This tool is really about helping give people information uh, that they can use to share that health disparities exist um, and show where they exist and to uh, take a, a snapshot and a picture and share that with people who may have some influence um, on policy uh, that can help uh, eliminate those disparities. In addition to acknowledging that the data itself uh, is incomplete, um, we want to acknowledge that that the tracker that we're launching is just a start. Uh, it only includes data about a few health outcomes and, and one determinant of health outcomes. And there are many, uh, and there are many that we aspire to, to, to bring into this tracker. And, and, and hopefully we will see the data become more complete over time as it uh, becomes more available um, and as the data starts to tell a better story.